form. It's uh, the best cuisine for me in the world and um, it's I would say the, the summit of cooking if you like and where it gets more into detail, fine detail of um, um, sourcing the produce from all over France and um, uh, meticulously working it um, to, to perform artwork. Um, and then you have the um, simple homely cooked meal which is normally found in, in some small little bistros where normally family run businesses where they'll go to the markets, buy their produce, come back, put a few dishes together and normally you, you'll find most of the time some, some classical, old classical dishes on the menu. The French, like most cultures, vary their flavours by the season. This may not have a huge influence in our modern world, where most herbs and spices are available all year round, but traditional seasonal dishes are still flavoured by the season's produce. Common in many dishes are the staple European herbs that flavour food throughout the world. There are four herbs that are considered the mainstay of French flavours. These are known as fung herb and consist of parsley, chives, tarragon and chaville. In French cuisine, the Italian variety of parsley is considered to be the most versatile and features in many dishes and is also often used chopped as a garnish. Rosemary and thyme feature prominently in French cuisine as do basil and majorum. Fennel is famous for its aniseed flavour and is used from seed or sometimes bulb. The French embraced fennel in the late 19th century, partly due to the popular drink of the time, absinthe, which is flavoured with the aromatic herb. A herb often used in the preparation of white meats and vegetable dishes in France is sage. And finally, herbs are used in unique ways in France. For example, the bouquet garni, which is a bouquet of different herbs wrapped and tied and added to broths, stews and soup to infuse flavour. And of course, herbe de Provence or provincial herbs, which is a mixture of dried herbs, usually dominated by thyme, that is often used on grilled meats and added to vegetables and stews. French food is seeped in tradition, and unlike some cultures which have left some dishes in the past, the French are proud of their culinary history and embrace the unusual ingredients of yesteryear. This dish is probably one of the most famous. During my experience of um, spending some time in France, I actually um, did a harvest in the Bordeaux region, um, working with some lovely French ladies. Uh, month of September, started raining, we were in between the vines picking grapes for the lovely Bordeaux um, vintage and um, starting to rain and all of a sudden these, these French ladies disappear. I'm wondering where are they and uh, all of a sudden they come back and uh, bags full of snails and also with an invitation for dinner that night. So that's probably the first experience I had with, uh, with snails, which is quite an interesting one for me, and um, made me understand how important these little um, escargots are to the French and their French cuisine. For this dish, you will obviously need some escargot, or snails. Now don't just grab them out of the garden though. Snails need to be purged or prepared for consumption and are generally slow cooked in stock to soften the flesh. Also for this escargot entree, you will need some other basic ingredients. And finally, some spinach, as we will be serving this dish on a spinach bed. First of all, chop your cured veal. Finely chop the walnuts and chop your garlic. This dish is quite rich with garlic flavour, 
more so than the majority of French recipes. Some dishes use whole cloves, but escargot requires a strong infusion of the herb. Finely chop the parsley and put it aside for later. You will also need to prepare your spinach. Select some of the nice leaves from the bunch and remove the woody stem right up to the leaf. Then slice the long leaves in half and bunch them together to chop. Now we are ready to cook. Pour some oil in the pan and add some butter also. Then let the pan heat up and wait for the butter to melt and start to sizzle before adding your cured veal. Add your walnuts and stir. You should have a delicious smelling rich base for your snails. Add the pre-prepared snails to the pan, mix them in with the sauce and add the garlic and most of the parsley. Cook the garlic and parsley through for a minute or so to release the flavours. Then add a little of the juice stock from the snails. Now add the white wine and simmer for a few minutes before putting aside while you cook your spinach. You can season a little here if you like. Don't forget to taste as you go though. Oil and butter another pan as you did earlier. Take your chopped spinach and place it in the pan to fry. Ensure it is well coated with butter. Season with a little salt and pepper, add a little water, then cover and simmer for a few minutes. Now your escargot on a bed of spinach should be ready to serve. Place the snails back on the heat just to bring up the temperature, then plate up the spinach. Pour some of the butter from the spinach pan onto the escargot and give it a quick mix before serving on the spinach bed. Sprinkle on some fresh parsley, and there you have a delicious, famous French favorite, escargot. Bon appetit. Coming up on Cultural Flavors, a slow-cooked provincial favorite, and we learn to cook a classic yet simple French dessert. Although French food is often rich and seemingly exotic, it's the preparation of the dishes that have forged this reputation, not the ingredients. The variation of vegetables in the cuisine of France is generally fairly limited and are vegetables available to most people looking to recreate famous French dishes at home. Of course, carrots are the mainstay of the French dining experience. Both adult and baby carrots are used and the French are famous for their glazed carrots. Although originating in Peru, the potato has become popular in France, but not until the early 1800s. It is thought to have been introduced to the region by Spanish sailors and soon replaced the turnip as the main root vegetable due to its easy cultivation. The turnip still has its place in the local cuisine though, as it is much more flavoursome. Leeks are popular in France and prized for their onion and cucumber-like taste. The white base is more often valued, but the green leaves are often used to wrap the bouquet garni. The familiar purple aubergine, or eggplant, features in the food of the region, as does zucchini. Mushrooms also play a vital role in French cuisine. Fitting into the seasonal nature of the cooking across France, mushrooms that usually start to appear after winter are a popular ingredient in hearty meals throughout the spring. Like Italy, truffles are highly prized and are one of the few places that have a thriving truffle industry. Originally a peasant dish, beef bourguignon or French burgundy has become a popular mainstay of French cuisine. A simple dish that is easy to cook, beef burgundy needs little preparation, but it does require a few hours to cook and is best served the day after. Beef bourguignon for me is, uh, is uh, again a, a very old classical dish that um, everyone knows all around the world. Um, and uh, it does come from the Burgundy region. 
using good quality red wine and um, making sure that you've got um, the right quantity of, um, of beef and vegetables mixed in and let it cook nice and slowly so it takes its time to take in all the different flavours from the different ingredients used. And yes, of course, the, the old tr truth is that um, it tastes better the next day. Um, I think it gives the, the, all the ingredients time to come together in harmony and uh, complement each other. The following day it, it's, it's like it's marinating um, in the fridge overnight and then you cook it up and warm it up the next day and it um, has this beautiful flavour again. For this hearty provincial stew, you will need a quality cut of meat and a range of fresh vegetables. Also flavouring this dish is bouquet garni. You can make this yourself using leek leaves and fresh herbs tied in a bunch with string. First, peel your carrots. You can do this the traditional way or with a peeler. Chop them up and put them aside for later. Take your small onions, top and tail them and peel them. If you can't get small pearl onions or pickling onions, you may need to slice them in half but don't chop them. Chop the large onion as normal for frying. To prepare your mushrooms, like the onions, you may need to chop them. If you have access to tiny button mushrooms, use them whole. Peel and chop your garlic very fine if possible and finely chop your parsley. You will need to slice your meat into cubes. Trim the cut if need be, but don't be too fussy. Keep the size uniform so they cook and absorb flavours evenly. Now it's time to fire up your stove. Place a pan on the heat and add some oil and butter. Ensure the pan is well coated. Place the meat cubes in the pan and brown them off. Keep turning them, you don't want to overcook the meat in the pan, just give it some nice colour and flavour. Season with salt and pepper, but not too much, you can always season more later. Add the carrots and some chopped onion and stir through the oils, coating the whole dish with the simmering sauce. Then place it in your pot on a low heat. Sieve some flour over the mixture and coat well. This adds texture to the dish and keeps the meat together. Add your garlic, bouquet garni and tomato paste. Then pour in a whole bottle of burgundy. Bring up the heat a little until it just starts to bubble. Place in the veal stock. Then put it aside on a low heat to simmer for about an hour and a half. Fry up your baby onions and mushrooms in oil and butter just enough to coat them well. Don't overcook them, put them aside to add much later. After about an hour and a half, it's time to add the other ingredients and mix well into the broth. Leave on a low heat for another half an hour, taste and season if necessary. Then it should be ready to plate up. Serve the beef bourguignon in a large bowl with a slice of crusty French bread. You can eat it right away and it is delicious, but many say beef bourguignon is best prepared the day before, so it's great for dinner parties. Next on Cultural Flavours, we explore the sweet world of French desserts and give you a step-by-step -step guide to a baked caramel classic. One more thing the French are famous for are their desserts and pastries. Considered the home of modern desserts, 
France is rich with tasty sweet dishes that have evolved over hundreds of years of food appreciation. French desserts are popular with home cooks as anyone can try their hand at the multitude of dishes and the ingredients are readily available. Eggs are very important in French desserts and cakes and are the key ingredient in dishes like creme caramel, mousse, custard and eclairs. Of course, French cooking just wouldn't be possible without butter. Butter is used in most dishes, but especially desserts. The French are also fond of adding fruit to their dessert creations in all manner of styles. And where would desserts be without sugar? Sugar is a part of nearly every dessert in the French food vernacular. And here are a few classics to inspire your cooking at home. Macaroons are a French classic and are often presented in several flavours. Chocolate is popular, as is pistachio, lemon and strawberry. Macaroons can be a challenge for the home cook to tackle, but the rewards are delicious. Of course, when you think French desserts, eclairs always pop to mind. Eclairs are also flavoured differently, but the chocolate variety is by far the most recognisable. The French probably have more desserts in their food culture than any other. They have perfected the art of flans, tarts and chocolates, plus a myriad of delicious treats too many to mention. Another aspect of French desserts is of course the visual creativity. To be a pastry chef in France is to not only be a master of cooking, but also an artist presenting their culinary creations in traditional and new and original ways, sometimes creating desserts that look too good to eat. The French have made a true art out of desserts, yet they need not be complicated. The trick with this dish is timing. Let things cook too long and it will be back to the mixing bowl for another try. Well, the reason why I chose creme caramel is because it's, a, it's an old classic and everyone knows it. Um, also, um, I think that the, um, the art to making a good creme caramel is all in the, um, the uh, cooking of the caramel, making sure that you don't let it go too dark and bitter. Um, so it's, um, it's something that's used quite often in France. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very simple dish to cook. Uh, at home or a nice classical bistro that you can find in Paris. You'll find it on virtually every menu uh, that you can find in, in France. Although deceptively simple, creating creme caramel at home can be fraught with pitfalls. We'll show you how to create this dessert step by step. First, crack all your eggs into a mixing bowl. For this recipe, it's not necessary to separate the whites and yolks, so we're off to a flying start. The next step is to add your sugar. Don't dump it all in at once. The sugar needs to be slowly whisked into the eggs, mixing as you go, like this. Then, it's over to the stove to warm your milk. You will need to bring it to the boil but rather than stand and watch it, you can prepare your vanilla bean. Carefully slice the bean lengthways, but don't cut it right to the end. This makes it easier to get the bean out of the mixture later. Place the vanilla bean in the milk and wait for it to boil. As the milk rises, take it off the heat and put it aside for the vanilla to infuse. Now it's time to make the caramel. All you need for caramel is sugar, water, and perfect timing. You will also need a dish or sink filled with water to cool the saucepan. Then it becomes a waiting game. You don't need to stir the mixture, just wait until the water evaporates from the sugar. If you attempted this without water, the sugar would burn. The trick with caramel is to watch it cook and wait for the colour to change. Then it's just a matter of taking it off the heat when it turns a golden brown, which happens very quickly. When it does, 
Place your pan in the water to cool for about half a minute to stop it from overcooking. Then quickly pour the caramel into the base of each bowl before it begins to set. Go back to the eggs and sugar and whisk in the vanilla milk you made earlier. Find the vanilla bean and scrape the seeds out into the mixture. Then you need to remove the bubbles or they will appear in your final dessert. Use a ladle to work the bubbles off the top of the milk and put them aside. You won't need them. Ladle the mixture into the bowls on top of the now set caramel. You'll notice we have the bowls in a bain-marie. Of course, we will fill this with water to just below the top of the bowls and it will prevent the dessert from burning while cooking. Place the bain-marie in the oven at 180 degrees for about 40 minutes. Carefully take them out of the oven and they should be browning on top. Let them cool, then place them in the fridge to set. This usually takes two to three hours. When set, run a knife carefully round the edge, turning the bowl as you go. Then you should be able to place a plate on a dish, turn it over and remove the bowl, leaving a delicious dessert behind. Use the now softened caramel left in the bowl to decorate the plate. And there you have authentic French cream caramel. If that doesn't make you hungry, nothing will. We have barely touched on the food of France and we could easily fill a whole series with amazing culinary creations from the home of fine cuisine. Unique thinking and centuries of experimentation has provided us with the foundation of many modern cooking techniques. Cultural Flavours continues to explore the world through the diversity of food. Let Cultural Flavours take you on a gastronomic journey so you can experience the tastes of the globe at home. Oh.